All right, let's talk about cholesterol, my favorite topic. This topic is so perverted in scientific circles, especially medical circles. It's really frustrating. By the way, I did a five-year PhD on the topic of cholesterol and sex hormones. So I'm very qualified to talk about this. And the main study that I want to show you and I want to focus on is a study with 12.8 million people. Because you can't argue with that study size, right? You can't say, well, it's kind of a small study. 12.8 million people. And the study is called Total Cholesterol and All-Cause Mortality. Total cholesterol. It's not the best metric, right? You can do LDL versus HDL ratios. You can look at particle size, all that. But let's just look at total cholesterol because most of the doctors look at total cholesterol. And by the way, all cause mortality means death by any cause. It means you're dying of heart attacks, dying of strokes, dying of literally anything, lung failure, whatever. So they're looking at what's your cholesterol? How do you die? And all I wanna look at is figure two here. And you'll see there's a graph that says men and women hazard ratio and total cholesterol. Hazard ratio, by the way, means hazard of dying. So you don't want a high hazard ratio. Now, earlier this week, I had a client from Greece, the country of Greece, and he's a vegan, and he had some blood work he sent me. His total cholesterol is 110. And that's very common with vegans and vegetarians. Their total cholesterol is 110, 120, and the doctor will come into the office, he'll give you a high five, and he'll say, you are the model of good health. I'm so proud of you. Yes, you have no testosterone. Yes, you have no sex drive. Yes, you have depression. Yes, you have no energy. Yes, you have brain fog. But you're the model of good health. And he'll say, yeah, but I have depression. And I have brain fog. And I have low testosterone. And I have no sex drive. And he'll say, yeah, but at least your blood test looks really good. <sighs> That's what we're dealing with in our modern medical system. They think the lower, the better in terms of cholesterol. There's plenty of people out there that will say that. It's complete nonsense. First of all, a big reason for that is a large portion of your brain is made of cholesterol. Secondly, your sex hormones are made from cholesterol. Testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, they're made from cholesterol. If you want low testosterone, give yourself low cholesterol. How do you do that? Eat super low fat. You'll feel like garbage after a couple of years. Sometimes it takes a couple of years. You've got a lot of cholesterol stored up in your brain and stored up in your cells. You have quite a good reserve of it, but eventually you deplete that reserve. So. Let's talk about me. My total cholesterol is usually about 240, maybe even 260 sometimes. And again, I did my PhD on this topic. That doesn't scare me in the least. I think that's phenomenal. I think that's amazing. But what happens when I go to the doctors, the conventional doctors in America? It happens all the time. They come into the office, they'll be all sweaty. And they'll say, I'm sorry to inform you, you're gonna die any minute of a heart attack unless we get you on some drugs, some statins right? That's what they do. I'm not kidding. Um, your total cholesterol is 240. You're going to die. That's very scary for people, especially if you've never studied this. You just assume the doctor knows best. You assume they've studied it and you assume they took more than one class on this in medical school, but they really haven't taken much more than like a week of, st of classes on the topic of cholesterol, uh, obviously. So the optimal range, I mean, look at the actual data. The optimal range is between 180 and 280. And if you're in that range, I'm as happy as could be. Your hormones will be amazing. Hopefully, unless you have some other issue like heavy metals or whatever, there's obviously other potential issues. There's nuance here, but the optimal range for your cholesterol, at least 180 and 280. Now, by the way, if you get above 300, you'll see that that hazard ratio does start to go back up. So there are more risks as you get up three, four, five hundred. Some, some of my clients are 500 on their total cholesterol. I don't like that at all. I'm very concerned about that. Let's bring that down. Sometimes you can even use veganism as a tool, as like a lever to pull to get that down if you need to. There's other ways to do it, by the way. You don't have to do that. But if you start getting above 300 on your total cholesterol, that's when you start looking at particle size and LDL versus HDL ratio and all of the nuance there. That's when it matters. As long as you're below 300, I don't even care about that stuff. Let's ignore it <laughs> unless you're legitimately high if you're legitimately high let's pay attention to it and again this is all framed based on your genetics also so some other genes like lpa might be a factor we might look at some specific things we might look at homocysteine there are genes that can influence your heart disease that are totally outside of cholesterol in fact most of your heart disease gene risks have nothing to do with cholesterol it's all about inflammation at the end of the day if you've got plaque in your arteries, it's from inflammation. You can measure plaque in your arteries with a CT scan, by the way. But 
you know, and by the way, I have zero plaque in my arteries. So it's absurd to assume that I'm going to die any minute of a heart attack when my cholesterol is high, supposedly high. And I don't even think it's high, by the way. If I go in and get 260, they're telling me it's high. I'm saying, no, no, that's not high. If you're coming in at 260 and you're saying, hey, I've got high cholesterol. I'm saying, no, you don't. You've got amazing cholesterol. I love you just the way you are. <laughs> so you get the idea. This cholesterol thing has been perverted, the whole topic. It's been used as a bludgeon to make more money for these drug companies that are selling statins to almost everybody because almost everybody is above 200 on their cholesterol. And so if you put a little red flag on the blood test, when people get above 200, and which is what they do, and there's a ton of influence by the drug companies to get that happening and make that happen, obviously you're going to get a ton of money from statins. You're going to get everybody going on statins. And this is really frustrating because in scientific research, there's a ton of studies that say, oh, this supplement's really good for you because it lowers your cholesterol. And this food, like meat, is really bad for you because it raises your cholesterol. And this is good because it lowers. This is bad because it raises. On and on and on. And the only reason they're saying that is because of some nonsense historical stuff from Ansel Keys. And if you want to read all into that, there's plenty of uh, good information. Nina Teicholz would be a good authority on that. For example, when I gave a talk for the Special Forces, she was also one of the speakers at a summit that we were speaking at, like a private summit uh, for the U.S. Special Forces. So, you know, there's good information. I don't want to launch into the whole issue and history of cholesterol. Uh, Dr. Uh, Joseph Mercola did a, a good little piece on it in his book, Fat for Fuel. The first chapter, first few pages, honestly, is an amazing summary of the history of cholesterol. Also, if you want to just a really short little summary of that, you can probably even read those first few pages on Amazon for free if you just look through the book. So your cholesterol is fine, most likely. might not be. It might be way too high. But at least now you know what that means. What is too high? What's optimal? What's too low? I'm more worried if you're too low than if you're too high, supposedly, according to the modern system. Don't be fooled. A lot of it is just smoke and mirrors to sell things. That's usually what you find uh, when there's a lot of money behind the scenes motivating people. They're going to push for the money and not for your health. Take matters into your own hands. Pay attention to your own health. <laughs>